Kushka. And now the trods are calling me. Calling me, calling me. Yes, now the trods are calling me. Away from the Rushka. I once knew a girl in Winterbuck. Winterbuck, Winterbuck. We had to do it in the dark. The girl from Winterbuck. And now the trods are calling me. Calling me, calling me. And now the trods are calling me. Away from Winterbuck. I once knew a girl down in Dawn. Down in Dawn, down in Dawn. Six for ten and full of brawn. The girl from down in Dawn. And now the trods are calling me. Calling me, calling me. Yes, now the trods are calling me. Away from girls in dawn. I once knew a girl from Old High Guard. Old High Guard, Old High Guard. Those priestly robes made me so hard. The girl from Old High Guard. And now the trods are calling me. Calling me, calling me. Yes, now the trods are calling me. Away from Old High Guard. I once knew a girl from the Marcher's Land. The Marcher's Land, the Marcher's Land. She finished me with just one hand. The girl from Marcher's Land. And now the trods are calling me. They're calling me, calling me. Yes, now the trods are calling me. Away from Marcher's Land. I once knew a girl in Urizen. Horizon, Horizon, I tell a lie cause I knew ten, ten girls in Horizon, and now the trods are calling me, calling me, calling me, yes now the trods are calling me, away from Horizon, I once knew a girl in the league, in the league, in the league, my stamina she did fatigue, the girl from in the league, and now the trods are calling me, calling me, calling me, yes now the trods are calling me, away from in the league, I once knew a girl in the brass coast, the brass coast, the brass coast, and she's the one who cost the most, the girl from the brass coast, and now the trods are calling me, calling me, calling me, yes now the trods are calling me, away from the brass coast, I once knew a girl, she was an orc, was an orc, was an orc, when she was done, I couldn't walk, the girl who was an orc, and now the trods are calling me, Calling me, calling me, and now the trods are calling me, away from all these orcs. I once knew a girl from Verneva, 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 she tracked me down, I didn't get far, the girl from Verneva, and now the girl has married me, married me, married me, yes now the girl has married me. The girl from the Nava. Oh, I once knew a girl from Varushka. Varushka, Varushka, and she's the one who set the bar. The girl from Varushka, and now the trods are calling me, calling me, calling me. Uh, right, we have gone live. Hello, everybody. Dibs on his makeup. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, alert box needs to be moved up. Here we go. Hello, everyone. How are we all doing? I hope we're all good. 
Uh, Dawn, Tiny, Bolum, Mr. Honzo, Dibs on his makeup, Nick in the chair, ready, take what you can, <laughs> Rich, Al, thanks for subbing Bolum, I really appreciate it mate, um, so this is my last stream for a little bit, because on Friday I fly out to Tromso. Uh, y yes, pretty much that's pennies. No. Yes, 75 quid. We'll go with yes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I don't pay attention. I've set a target and that should be it. Uh, thank you, hun. Waifu for laifu. She hates it when I say that. Uh, 35 months you've subscribed for. That's crazy. Uh... And then he was never seen again as they hunt Yeti in Tromso. Yes, yeah. I can't wait. I really can't wait. Uh, so, going out on Friday, flying back a week later. So, no stream on Friday, Monday or the following Friday. Um, I will try to take loads of photos and post them into the Discord to make everybody jealous. So, it says, bloody hell, Nick, that's quite a Beaujolais glass. Yeah, I think it's just a fancy league word, but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I, don't I don't, I don't speak foreigner. Um, <laughs> uh, Zodor, hello, you handsome bastards! Thank you very much. How is your stitching going, my friend? Is that going all right? I hope so. Um, but yeah, so we are here. Um, so just an update. This is for the makeover of three, of which. Uh, Nick is now going to be one of the purchasers, so he will have a victim. I believe your victim's actually going into the league as well. Yes. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. It's like yeah, a, no, he's going into the league. It's not like I'm organising it or anything. So, where's the link? Uh, it's Bits. That is Bits. Um, there is a link for... Uh, if you would rather donate cash, mate, um, I will just send you my PayPal. I'm not meant to do that because of Twitch stuff, but I will just send you my uh, my PayPal, okay? Or if Helen's got a link to it, then she can send it to you. Uh, Deluxury, thank you so much for the subbing. That's all the bits, the bits I've got left. See, I do this thing called Twitch RPG, where basically it's like questionnaires. It takes two, three minutes, and then they give you like 100 200 300 bits to um uh, to donate to streamers i've got 10 quids worth of bits at the moment just from doing this questionnaire thing i want to donate them to myself but i can't <laughs> it's, it's horrible so i'll have to, i'll have to find a new thing let me i'm just gonna ooh. Uh, I do have a... Where is the link for it? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to... I'll sort it, I'll sort it out, Tiny, and send it your way. Okay, mate? Um, so, yeah, I'll have to sort it out. Um, what else is going on? Yeah, so, when it comes to raiding at the end, uh, something was pointed out to me by uh, Dolly. That is a good thing to do, because I'm all about the wholesomeness, and I'm also about giving back to people um doing twitch is so demoralizing if for people when you start off and you're streaming to one two three people so it was suggested that i raid uh in the tabletop rpg community uh someone with one two three or viewers people watching because more often than not it's the people in it so I think that'll be a nice thing to do. So we'll try it for the first time tonight. But then Dolly followed it up with, just make sure they say thank you. <laughs> My hands are tied. Um, an update for people about me. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was very brutally honest about my own mental health and how shit it is at the moment. Um, I went and saw my GP today. Um, I've been referred to a therapist um, and I will be on antidepressants. So I'm going in the right direction, hopefully. 
all right? So don't be like me and hold it off for a very long time because it only get it doesn't help. But still, positives. Uh, it's going well. Need to buy pattern paper to make my new tunic. Awesome. Well, if we can help, let us know because I'm pretty sure people will have uh, will be able to help with all of that sort of stuff. And if you need places to go and stuff, so. Um, I can't think of anything else. I'm going on my honeymoon. That's kind of the only thing I've been thinking about at the moment. So this evening, that's a big step. Hope it helps. I'm around if you need anything. Thanks, Pat. That really means a lot, mate. Um, this evening, we have the wonderful, the dashing me and Nick's here too. <laughs> <laughs> so don't know, we have, I've got nothing. Hey, look, it's the third best Crimson Reaper. Is he talking about me there? Because as far as I'm concerned, you're the best. You're number one, and then it's joint, but the rest of you. So everyone else, you're number one, and everyone else is joint last. <laughs> I think that's right. That's how it goes, isn't it? If you're not first, if you're not second or third, you're joint last now. There we go. Pretty sure the best Reaper in the Crimson Reapers is the Reaper. Um... Mm. Uh, I'm quite. Fun. I'm. I'm quite fond of him. Oh, Rich, thank you. A thousand bits. That's lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, Esme! Woo! How are you doing? How was Holland? I hope you're good. Good to see you. Uh, hello, my sexy boys. We are both sending our love to you both and happy birthday to the lovely Helen. Yes. So, Phil H001, who is here? Uh, my, my wife. Uh, it's her birthday today. So... And as keeps on getting pointed out to me, I'm only as old as the woman I'm sleeping with. Uh, so I'm I'm now a year older. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it was funnier in my head. Um, oh, they're arguing about the Reapers now. Uh, isn't Tiny more last? Nick's just after first and second place there. No. No, I, I disagree. Uh, Pete, thanks for subbing, buddy. I hope you're good. Dolly is the sexiest reaper, apparently. No. No. No, it's it's one of the luckies. One of the luckies is the sexiest reaper. Yeah. Either Andy or Lucky. And you both know it. I'm going <laughs> to confirm that in the comment. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think so. Um, oh, everyone's chatting. Holland was lovely. I brought many Dutch foods and I am so far failing to not eat them already. Good. Chill, relax. I can't believe you said that out loud. Sorry, hun. Not sorry. Have you found your little present I left in the bed yet? Wait a minute, that sounds really weird. Have... Nah, I'll stick with it. Have you found that present I left for you in the bed yet? <laughs> um... <clears throat> oh, dear. I did. Good. Uh, we don't count them. It's just not fair. Uh, how to join the One Bit Army in Discord. Uh, you have to link your Twitch account to the your discord account you can link them and then you and then it gives you the uh, the thing the sexiest reaper would be the reaper uh considering just looking at him will get you killed nobody can say otherwise slays <laughs> yeah it, it's straight from esme so she's not wrong i'm sick of hearing about the reapers who Damn, Steve. So I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I love my wife. That got a bit criminal minds there. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I don't know. I don't watch it. Um, yeah, I've forgotten. So the last time I saw you, Nick, we were at the Reapers Ball, which yes, uh, I will say was an absolute disaster. It was it was great. I loved every second of it. It was so much fun. No, no, I loved it as well. It was absolutely just amazing. The venue was perfect. Mm. The it, we just got the atmosphere right. It felt very Reaper. I think the best way of doing it. I think because Reapers has a potential like well a particular feel. To it, and I think it like it came off really well on the ball. It gave mm. it kind of like a, gave it a little bit of a difference on like most balls. <coughs> uh, kind of yeah. like play events, and I just. Loved it. Such a good laugh. 
it was it was so much fun. It, I mean, I hate to say it because of the person who found the place. <sighs> but I mean, Tiny Bolan, they, everyone involved did a fucking amazing job. Yeah, they really absolutely good. nailed it. I was surprised at how good it was. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, me too. Actually, I'm on their side. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was I was expecting um, yeah send me a picture as well as me me three <laughs> uh, the food was amazing one of the best dinners I've had at LARP yeah well I didn't get really to eat that much uh, I was telling people off in the queue in front of me because I was stood in the queue and I and they were going oh I'm going up for seconds I was like mate I haven't even had firsts yet <laughs> so it's just like I was pushing my way to the front but. Yeah, they doesn't want to last to get food, and I was like, "Oh, this is actually good." Like, it was, yeah. Really good. The I was in the car with um with a friend on the way up. They, they're saying, "I've never had good food at an event." I was like, "Well, hopefully this one is on." Doubt yeah. it. Okay, and then I had this. I was like, "Oh, actually, no, that was good." <laughs> <laughs> there, there was um. Shut up, Dolly. I'm bored of that joke for the time being. Um, I didn't know he was in the navy though. But thanks for pointing it out. Um, to get in the bin, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, food-wise, it was phenomenal. The location was absolutely spot-on perfect. Uh, I think food was... It was up there with a trencher that you used to be able to get at Empire, for me, because yeah. the wooden spoon trenchers were just... They were amazing. Oh, so they were good. so nice. <laughs> so good. So where I go off to... Because where I'm unemployed... And uh, I have to go off to the job centre. Um, at the job centre, they um, they they don't talk to me about finding jobs because they know that I'm doing everything they ask and more because I'm sick of being unemployed. So we get in there, we chat. So one of the guys there, he chats to me about him and his nephew want, um, are potentially coming to E1. So I've recruited from the bloody job centre, which is amazing. And the lady there, one of the ladies there, uh, I talked to her about food. And I was telling her about the trenches. And she was just like, I'll have to have one of those now. So I was telling her how to make a trencher. And I think she she was, she was said she was planning on making one at the weekend with a stew in it. So, LARP is bloody everywhere. It's ridiculous. Stupid hobby. Um, <laughs> so... Did you recruit them into Wintermark, or do you not know what? No, I, I, I have to. I have to be. When it came to do, when I started doing this, and people would say, "Oh, what, what nation shall I go into?" I always used to say, "I'll go into Navarre. They're a good basic nation." Or go to Wintermark. They're a good basic nation. I am now sick of it. <laughs> I'm now absolutely sick of it. So it's very much. I will always say to everybody: read the wiki, have a look at the nations, and find an aesthetic you really like. And then go in whole hog into that one. Oh, Tiny, you're spoiling me with your bits. Another two. Wow. We're getting there. Yeah, so uh, just so we... Oh my God. Just so we all know as well, the goal is to get to a £1,000. The number is bugging you. Don't say that. That is the, literally the worst thing you can say. Because I used to have people who would donate one bit at a time to purely make it an odd number. That used to go on for hours. <laughs> that did. Um, but yeah, so I don't recruit into the nations anymore. I used to do it a lot because I would I want I want people to come and play in the same nation as me and and have more. And but now no, it's go and find. Go, go and find your your own nation. Go and find something that you can get your teeth stuck into, you know? Yeah, your best fit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's... I was chatting... The um, the guy at the job centre, him and his nephew, they, they love the look of the league. So I've given him used to... He said, I, I don't do it anymore. Well, if I do, I do it subliminally. Um, <laughs> thank you, Tony. Um, so it's, it's just a, it's a great one because yeah, so then they were chatting to me about the, the league. 
Oh, you can't put. The, do you want to chuck the link to a, a mod, Esme, or or just chuck it to me on Discord and I'll have a look. Um, and mod madness. Um. So yeah, I, I try not to anymore because Wintermark's too big. And doing this, I've learned so much more about all of the nations. It's been it's unbelievable. So they're all great. Apart from High Guard. So They're all great. <laughs> yeah. Debatable. So <laughs> Yeah, so because obviously because the Reapers bought Oh yeah, that was true. And also, how many people are doing the Bolum drink challenge that he laid down? It's a joke, Twitch. Uh, how many people are doing it though? That every time we say the word Reaper, you have to have a drink. I'm curious because I need to know how many times I have to say Reaper about Reaper to the Reaper of Reaper. Just saying. So I didn't know that was a thing, but now I do. So later. <laughs> We'll get this one out. <laughs> You're all fucked. <laughs> so, what was your what was the highlights of the ball for you? Looking back at it, I was just seeing everyone and like the the, like the collection of of people we got. We got like a good mix of people from everywhere. It wasn't just mm. the dominantly the league. It was a nice mix of kind of like. Our friends, and interesting to see who who came along as well, and everyone just mixed really well together. There's no, there's no like group in the corner. You couldn't talk no. to that group because they're obviously in a group. Everyone was just mingling with each other. Um, yeah, yeah, it was absolutely. I think just the atmosphere and, and the fact that I got to see so many of uh, the Reapers as well, because uh, we've got quite a few Reapers that live on the island. I'm hoping people are doing the drinking game, and. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then a lot of them are from you know across the UK and and beyond. So it's yeah. nice to actually have a point in time. It's not just the four events a year to actually kind of see each other as well. Yeah, I think that's that was a a big thing. So, I mean, seeing a lot of people who who I like in the field. So seeing all the reapers. And realizing, and I think getting to know the characters a lot more was a big one, because I've always come up, I've I've come up to the Reapers, because I mean, like I know, I know yourself, Bolum, Tiny, Salt, Dolly, and 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 um, you know, Emily and, and people, and it's really nice to come up and see, but I never really got to know the characters in any way. It's like I say hi to everybody out of character, and it's like. In character, who would I do a lot for? Like, definitely yourself. Bolan, probably. Tiny, probably. Yeah, that's about it. Out of character. Love everyone. In character. Yeah. There's only a few. <laughs> no, as soon as you get to Anvil, uh, you know, three days isn't long enough. No. Like, we're just we're sort of busy, sort of like almost work mode. And you don't yeah. really have that time to kind of chill out and do the things that you want to do sometimes just being with your mate <laughs> i think i think it was it was very much a case of you want to do everything you want to talk to everybody i mean empire is yes team heidi definitely definitely team heidi mm, definitely not team heidi's dad though still want to brutally murder the guy in character for reasons um, but yeah, the the events you never get the chance to sit down and just chill and chat and stuff properly, and do the whole. So tell me about yourselves. Where are you from? Are your are your parents still alive? Have you got your father's sword? Stuff like that. And <laughs> it, it yeah, it, it was great at the ball because you actually got to interact with the reapers properly. So like uh, the prince, for example absolutely crack me up if <laughs> you ever get the chance to send someone to mediate for the reapers do not send him ever <laughs> that's why he's there he's amazing he's such a good negotiator on behalf of us as a group don't you think no 
<laughs> it was terrible. It was so, he was brilliant though. That I I yeah, really he's terrible I, in the best way. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It it was it was so good. It was it was I I found it really fun because you get to watch the dynamic of all everyone there, and how everybody sort of played off of each other, and it was it was really nice to watch. It was yeah, I was quite envious about a lot of it to be honest. It was uh, yeah. You're welcome. There we go. That's, you're okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mister Hunza. No, I think we have a really fun kind of like this character dynamic between everyone in the group and. Mm. Uh, like kind of the roles we have within the group and things, and how they kind of bounce. There's a particular question gets asked, and it's like, oh, oh, oh. and they quickly look at the person, and they go, yeah, yeah, and that's fine. <laughs> you get the head shake or nod. I, I picked up on a few dynamics where I know the people who are in like command essentially, and I did notice there were a few times when people who I thought, well, you're not in command. Why are you asking that person? It's like, well, why are people asking you for permission to do stuff? And it was, yeah, I never really put that together. Uh, Ryan says it was great fun, all the high drama. Excellent. So, Choco Moco Latte. So, yeah, it was, uh, you could show the roles, you could show the roles off if you wanted to, Nick, says Bolum. Well, yeah. I'm trying to remember the new role names we have. So... Obviously, Reaper is now quite a big group, and we think like we're trying to make sure that it's kind of like a, an umbrella so everyone can get game. Mm. Um, so obviously, we have uh, the prince. He's the you know uh, front man, front person who is there to negotiate on behalf of the group, which our prince does amazingly as our Bravo <laughs> prince. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have the captain. Yeah, there's obviously uh, chapter battle stuff, normal things there. Um, the you know head of magic, uh, head of money, and you know the normal names. We have particularly over the top fancy names for all of our, our positions and things. Uh, and we I'm... have honorary positions as well, like uh, champion. So next event, our champion has to after their battle training has to fight everyone else in the group who wants to have, be the champion and then they have the honorary position of champion so if there's any particular problem on the battlefield we send the champion off to go deal with that problem or if there's a slight on the streets of, uh, of Anvil then they'll we'll use them to challenge them in the duel on our behalf mm. um, and things like that but the point of the main positions is um, uh, which is something we've all uh, put together for is we have a commission statement and every head uh, has their name and what position they're in. And we have like a mission brief from that position. So it's head of magic, military, priest, money. There'll be a little quest. Uh, yeah. It's one of the ones that Tiny did, I think, last event, which was really good, was anyone who's interested in making money against the money game, he'll lend them a throne. And they've got to try and make as much money off that throne as possible. Mm. And whoever makes the most amount of money off that throne in profit wins a prize. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, so it gives um, new players for those ones that want to try and get into something else of, in the game, and mm. the opportunity to get involved and not just be on the sidelines. <clears throat> or even yeah. the fighters are not involved in magic or priesting or anything else mm. or in synod. Um, they can be the bodyguard of the person who's going to these meetings and then be introduced and meet all the kind of movers and shakers of Anvil, and make. Make the person that they're looking after look good. Because one person turns up, absolutely amazing. It's mm. brilliant. You're doing your job, you're doing your mission, awesome. If you've only got two or three bodyguards with you, you automatically look a bit more important and larger, even if it's your first time going into that uh, political sphere. Yeah. That's 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 really good. I like that. Um, Zoido, I'll have a look at the, the roles... Uh, when I finish the stream, I'll have a check, and if if not, uh, I'll well, I'll I'll have a look when I'm done here. Okay, buddy, and I'll try to get that sorted for you. Uh, so the champion is the one most likely to die. Then, Dolly yes. says, N not if they're good. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Ryan's just suggested uh, uh, martial combat for positions in our hall. 
Ryan, if we did that, I would be every position in our hall. Let's let's be honest here. Um, I'd be in a hall of one because I just wouldn't stop at knocking people down. I would just kill everyone. Um, the star bar issue was a perfect example of that. What happened in the star bar? Oh, so... For some reason, I can't think of uh, words. There's a position uh, mm. that we have in the Reapers, which is essentially head of uh, causing trouble. Um, I've, I've been sent. I've been sent the uh, the thing here. Ray, there we go. Doesn't it look fancy as well? It looks really look, good. Look, look all the work he's done that I can't remember any of it off the top of my head right now because my brain's not working. Uh... He's gonna message me later, giving me abuse. The Master of Hearts. Oh yeah, so that's a league thing. So if our mm. um, our hearth. Uh, kind of magic and culture. Um, marriages are incredibly important. That's something you do later on in life. And you cannot mess about in a marriage. Otherwise, at that point, you cannot be trusted in anything and no one should do business with you. However, um, that's where um, the League Archetype of Kikabeos come in. Mm. And um, uh, with Sisabeos, or Kikabeos, how you like to pronounce it, um, they're professional paramours and they're the only ones you're allowed to have relationships with right. whilst in a marriage. Uh, so the Master of Hearts is doing the very important job of connecting different guilds together via arranged marriages and what's uh, suitable. That's... Um... Okay. I like that because I went... Yeah, because... Well, I haven't really had the chance to as Cal yet, but as as Mac, I saw a lot of kickabouts <laughs> around the field. I visited a lot. Um, I'm just attaching the uh, this file because I'm I'm going to try to put the thing on screen. I've only got one monitor, so I can't do multiple things. Unfortunately, Roland, uh, I'm not that good. I'm afraid. Um, Did you keep your mask on when you saw your kickabouts? That was before. That was oh. before I had that. So cause as Mac, I was just literally, uh, yeah, don't care, whatever, and just carried on regardless. Um, but then again, though, when I had uh, things to do in the league that I had to wear a mask for, um, I always wore, I always put a mask on. I was, I, Mac was very respectful of hearth magic and that so it was uh yeah it was a it was a lot of fun the kicker bayos they put in so much effort though into that game and that they are a lot of fun they are oh, yeah, they really are a lot of fun uh oop. Right, let's uh let's save that and Save that. Just yeah, just know. saw Bernan's message about the contract for reckoning. So yeah, um, one of the ones we had, which was at the, the good friends of people at Starbar, because that's like our our local. Um, yeah, I say local, so upper end, upper end of the field, but we like it there. Um, and they hired us to say, look, these people disrespected one of our dead to just go off the battlefield, and gave him abuse as they're coming, you know, taking the body out through the portal and right. back home. Um, we like to make sure that they're aware that that sort of behaviour isn't isn't okay. And I'm like, yep, yeah, absolutely, no problem. So um, in a matter of seconds, the Reapers geared up, got whatever weapons they could uh, find around camp, and um, walked our way over to um, the Star Bar to find where these people are, to have a chat. Um, and before we got there, the militia was already there panicking because by calling us to go have a chat with them was they thought was equivalent to trying to get them murdered. Uh, and, <laughs> and the militia was already trying to calm down the scene before we arrived uh, <laughs> to, to, to stop us doing anything. Um, and they instantly apologised. So when we got there, the militia was there 
and the person in question was already apologising um, to the star yeah. bar as we were arriving. And that was brilliant. I... Easy money, that one. Yeah, I just, I, I don't. Yeah, people apologise too quickly. <laughs> it was a lot of fun if they didn't. <laughs> exactly. I mean, could you imagine that all of a sudden the Reapers turn up and then it's just like, and then hilarity would ensue. Um, it's generally how it goes. Yeah. We'll, we'll get our best negotiator on scene and uh, push the pence forward and you'll sort it out. Yeah, yeah it's... Um... There we go. Right. So I've just put literally in the centre of the screen... The official, uh, the offices of the Reaper Council. So, it does, yeah. Rich has just hit the nail on the head there. It, it sounds like a missed roleplay opportunity to me. Really does. Really does. I think it would have been a lot of, uh, been a lot of fun if you just turn and beat up everyone. I know, it was still great roleplay, and then we all got our money and we sat around the bar and, and, and drank it and we left excellent um, uh, it's our bar it's pretty much all of the reapers wow yeah I, I've yeah I've, I've got I've got too much business with you at E1 now I think I think you're I think you're dominating my Friday night at the moment the reapers in a good way in a very very good way uh, yeah good. with that Business, um, well, yeah, opposition, <laughs> yeah, a lot of business, yeah. and then we'll talk business. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, what have, what have we got? Uh, so, the prince aspires to lead uh, uh, the company to greater heights, uh, supported by the prince in waiting. Uh, yeah, so in the... case our prince dies, um. At an event, the Prince and Waiting is already the leader up until a new... Uh, so at the beginning of the event, we have the Reaper Council meeting. Mm. Uh, so the Reaper meeting is... All the Reapers come together. Uh, so for... Important one is, is next event, E1. Uh, We're doing a cabinet reshuffle. Right. So all of our major roles will be taken away from everyone. And they must be re-elected by the group. Who's Liz um, Truss? <laughs> yeah, so um, we do it. So everyone has exactly the same amount of votes. People put in who they want to uh, put forward, or they can stand up for themselves, say a few words if they want to say a few words, and um, we will do a, a vote on who should have it. Whoever gets the most votes is now mm. the new prince or the new captain. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only one that's different is the Prince and Waiting, and that is hand picked by the Prince. Okay, that's cool. Um, sad... <laughs> sadly, Liz Truss will only be on amazing. the field. Sadly, Liz Truss will only be on the field for forty-five minutes on the front. <laughs> oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, so the troop leader leads our coven in the Reaper's name, and then supported by the playwright. So you were the troop leader, weren't you, previously? Yeah, so currently I'm the troop leader up until cabinet reshuffle at E1. Where Liz Truss is going to try and have it, and then it'll be quickly <laughs> taken over by someone else. Well, thankfully, she's only got 45 <laughs> minutes to get there, plead her case, and then, uh, yeah, and then she'll make your entire group bankrupt. Um, so the four, the seconds are picked by the relevant council members unless someone contests it. Okay, Sorry. that's cool. Um, so the playwright is the troop leader second, then. Yeah, also we do, uh, obviously <coughs> most of our performances, obviously being the league, is dramaturgy. Yes. Um so we do actually write a lot of performances, um, which is mostly sort of uh, fun kind of comedy panto-esque rituals, which we then do our massive winter rituals from. Yeah. Uh, so make everyone laugh, have a good time, and then we blow something up or curse someone. Hmm. Um, with the power of laughter. 
it, your performance is it your group is phenomenal i mean as someone who witnessed it all closely and firsthand it was great it was fantastic to watch uh how, what you all do and that and your performance especially was was brilliant so so kudos to you lot you really good thank job. you very much uh no i just play the narrator so i get the easy part of just mm. well, talk bollocks for as long as possible and then try and get certain people just to do their part and they just go in and, and be awesome and let's watch them as soon as i can see them get towards the end i go right i i can next do person it. talk waffle I, mean, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, considering this is what I do, just talking bollocks, I I couldn't do what you do. I don't I don't think because yours is more it's more focused, isn't it? It's more directed and and things. So it's got to be more story and stuff behind it, I guess. Is always... More fine, yeah. But it's yeah. only because we only have drama time is weird because we have three things you need to make sure you get right for a ritual to work in dramaturgy mm. which is uh the stage stage has so when i announce where it's set that's the stage uh, and that usually confirms to a realm of magic um mm. so like the counting house for example would be something that is in line with autumn magic yeah and things like that and then obviously you've got the mask personalities and one of those has to be something to do with the ritual as well. Uh, so obviously the Reaper or the Doctor is one that's aligned to, to Winter. Mm. And uh, and then you've got a prop. So you have like uh, the coin, a dagger, um, or something similar. Is there something else to need? As long as those three things are in, the magic works no matter what you say. So all I've got to do is introduce those three elements mm. and talk rubbish and try and make people laugh for like two minutes and <laughs> everything everything will be okay that's cool that's really cool hey zara how you doing uh oh. where's have i got yeah helen is in there just gearing up a mod who might be needed to jump in at any moment uh speaking of mods uh if anyone would like to be a twitch mod for me just give me a shout because i do need another one um, so the next two are self-explanatory, I think. So the captain and the sergeant, they're, yeah, fighty boys, basically. Um, quartermaster. It wasn't tiny. So, however, with the captain, um, their job does now enroll the fact that they have to find the next contract. So it's not just about being, um, uh, a warrior type it's also making sure you're um getting the relationships you need with other fighting groups mm. or people that are bankrolling fighting groups to keep that sort of relationship alive and to try and get the next contract okay okay that's cool so essentially they're the ones who come over and um take all of bronze money yeah right okay. yeah yeah with you on that <laughs> one um it's all right, Zara. Don't worry. It's all good. Um, so the sergeant forces orders. Well, enforces orders. Make sure they're followed on the field. Okay, that's cool. Uh, then you've got the quartermaster. Responsible for growing the company funds in order to equip them alongside the purser who holds tight to the purse for, for, of, some, of season's pay. There you go. So... It's yeah. Tiny was the quartermaster, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Uh, who is absolutely incredible. Obviously, the captain, everyone else does their job. Uh, maybe apart from the prince, is absolutely amazing at their job. Um, but yeah, Tiny just absolutely nailing it. Mm. He's done so much in such a short period of time. Yeah, he does good. I I, I enjoy seeing Tiny going around. Uh, he's yeah, he's always busy. Always, I've no, I don't think I've ever seen him sit down properly. And when he is sat down, it's because he's just he's done a big tour of the field. 
So, Freaky Fryer. Thank you for the bits. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, the Bishop seeks out work that ensures the Reaper's name only rises in esteem, while the Soul Keeper uh, aids them by ensuring the company strays not from virtue. Uh, so this is your religion game, then? Yes. Yeah. So uh, one is kind of the one is more kind of internal. Uh, I think uh, the Soul Keeper is more like an internal uh, kind of like chaplain or bishop uh, to make sure that everyone's individually is being looked after and the uh, soul keeper is a new title we're introducing uh into into e1 yeah and yep yeah. uh, and, and the bishops are our main person that comes to uh synod on all things religious matter uh, as brolin said those two roles have their work cut out yes <laughs> Excellent. Hello, Circuit. How you doing? I hope you're good. Uh, so, the Provocateur is a bravo among bravos. They push our company to grow in reputation. Then uh, uh, the Commodore aims to direct the fleets while they support the council as a whole. And Carolix, thank you so much for um, for subbing. Nineteen months, you crazy bastard. Evening, evening, all. Miss you all. Hope you're doing well. You're doing good. I hope you're good. Um, I have a feeling one of them will be following me around telling me I can't say things. That's uh, tiny. Maybe soul protector. Mm. Yes, uh, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, okay, so are these new roles, aren't they, these two, then, that you've got? Or... Uh, soul keepers, provocator, we... Uh... The Commodore is new. Uh, provocateur we've had for a little while, who is um, currently Ellie, is provocateur. She's the incredibly well-dressed uh, Reaper. She looks amazing. She was like, really great kit. We should a really nice hat and stuff. Long hair. Anyway, she's awesome, and essentially she just stirs up trouble as the provocateur. And she's incredible at it. Ah, uh, was she at the ball? Yes. Was she the one with the long cigarette thing? Uh, no, that's uh, Sally or Cora. And no, she's just trouble. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I noticed that one. She was very, very <laughs> funny, um, especially with, um, especially with Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That whole that was brilliant. I loved that. <laughs> oh my god I'm just thinking about it it's making me chuckle yeah who would have thought that Jean de Savos was so sought after who would have thought it was there a thing with, with a caller um, hitting on, on, on have you not heard what happened no right I wonderful I was, there. I was probably a different character at the time <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bolum, you'll want to drink. Keep drinking for this one. You need another drink. You really do. I've got mine now. I'm getting ready. <laughs> so I was sat down with with Heidi, and we were chatting away. And I was trying to do. I was doing God's work. <laughs> I was being wonderful, and um, and she came over and was essentially saying, oh, "You're lovely uh, to Heidi." She was saying, "Oh, you're so lovely." I know your team, Jean, Ryan. We all know your team, Jean. Um, I've never heard anyone proposition, Jean, so as, as much as you either. Um, <laughs> so she sat down talking to Heidi and just saying, you're, you're so good, you're much better than this. Uh, you can do so much better than him and you should, you should leave, uh, leave Jean to, um, to someone who'll, who'll look after him, like me. <laughs> like, oh, it's like no, I don't think that. It's just like no, no. You need to ignore what he is saying, pointing at me. You like, need to ignore him. It's like he's not. He hasn't got your best interests at heart. I do. Ignore Jean. <laughs> Go off with someone. Else. It's like wow. <laughs> yeah. uh, so are you? Are you sad? Don't worry. Come with me, dear. <laughs> it was so good. It <laughs> Have was someone this. 
It was a, but that's <laughs> that's what led to the whole. Um, that was what led to the prince having to. Uh, I use the term mediate very very loosely. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so he was trying to like sort it out, and I'm just and I was just listening, and I was just like, because I I am so Cal is a mediator. Amazingly for me, Cal is um, uh, lawful good. That was for Dolly. Ah, just seeing mixed <laughs> rabbit fur. That makes me happy. Good. Um, so I was watching. So I was watching him attempt to mediate, and I went over and got involved. And uh, he was so bad. It was painful to watch. Eventually got it all sorted, and they're like, "So where, where do we?" The loads of stuff came out. That's all in character stuff. So I won't talk. I won't talk about it here because I think the conversations are still going on. It needs to be, and more stuff needs to be spoken about. Um, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's so much fun. I'm loving it, and I I remember just saying, "Look, you two, just for fuck's sake, uh, here's a throne. Next time you're both at Anvil, go on a date." That's it. Just fuck off on a date. You're done. <laughs> That's it. And I left them oh, to it. I've got a plan for that, actually. Yeah. Um. I was like, yeah, got uh, a, a, a plan for his date. So I want to take him to um, Senate Motions. <laughs> now, Senate Motions is run by uh, the uh, General Gabriel or. Ex General Gable of the Wolves of War, which is now he's taken over from. Did you hear the rumor um, about Gabriel? No, I'd like to hear it. I'm not saying it. On, I'm not saying it on stream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it on stream. <laughs> yes, no, I have heard it. I was just wondering if you'd say it. No. <laughs> oh, so funny. So you're taking him to Senate motions. <laughs> Yeah, no, I want them both to go to Senate motion to have a lovely date with each other. Um, you know, and, and dance with, with General Gable. Can I come? <laughs> I'm just... We can watch. We'll drink together. We'll drink together and watch. <laughs> and then we can start talking about this vicious rumour. <laughs> oh, oh, have you heard? Mm, I think it involves a goat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard it was an oxen. Oxen. Wow, <laughs> going up in the world, are we? Oh, teaser. Yes, Zara, I really, really am with this. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. I can't. Oh, crying from laughing too much again. <sighs> yes, Steph, I cannot wait for it. It's going to be such a good laugh. But, have you my new hall, we're, uh, we're opening a bar. Are you? I didn't know you, I didn't I knew you were doing a new group, I didn't know you were opening a bar. Yes, yeah, so the Tillionson Plowshare Um the hall itself we decided it sounds so much like a pub. And then we thought, well, I know a lot of people who are um who are brewers in the field and they sell it all for in character coin. So why not do we just why don't we just buy a load of their stuff and then sell it? In a bar. So there we go. It's uh so yeah, we've got we're gonna have uh, our own the Tillionson Plowshare. Sounds like a pub is a pub. Yep. <laughs> so really, really good. <laughs> oh, Are you dear. um? Do you know whereabouts you're gonna be on the field yet, or it was sort of the same place uh, like kind of next to where you used to be? Uh, we're gonna be on the other side of the road, literally opposite. Amazing. Yep. Cool. So um, that's so almost by the border of Dawn and. Uh no, not up there. So literally where Hurst Hall was, because the yeah, road goes oh, around. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, literally yeah. just on the opposite side of the road. There, so it'll be really good. Um, running a bar is so much fun at Empire. I've been doing a small one in the marches for the two events I've been to. That's awesome. I mean, I I've got to go to the marches because of the incident that happened at the Reapers Ball with the marches. Um, because of. Um, a certain uh, Mr. Digby <laughs> got himself into a spot of bother with them and 
and it was so funny because we all when he, when people were telling us that I was like, oh, have you seen Alf's done this we were all just for fuck's sake again but yeah he nearly got himself beaten up which was funny so I nearly went and got into a fight with them uh, and I've now been invited for drinks I didn't go to the marches. The marches, by the way, is an incredible nation. They are yeah. so cool. They have such an awesome like duality between um, really happy, funny, almost like comedy characters mm. sometimes, and then absolute savage psychos who just get down to business. And it's it's an awesome <laughs> mix between the two. <clears throat> it's like, I oh, yeah, we love that guy. We love him so much. We put him into a giant Rooker man, set fire to him. Like, yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I went to... <coughs> it was two events ago, or maybe last event, Times Warfare, Long Dark. But um, I went in, and the camp's just amazing. It just looks like mm. how you'd imagine the marches to be. Just a big, sort of like market street, almost mm. right down to the end of... I love it. ...up and everything. I really do like going into the marches. I like, I've walked through a few times, and I bought vegetable lewds from them as well which was <laughs> hilarious that was so funny and I mean it, the, the trouble that was caused at the ball the ball was literally caused by the marchers um, need for we want help when we ask for help don't come and talk to us about this stuff if we haven't asked it and that was it. That's what caused all the issues. And I was just like, right, okay, that makes sense. It's like, yeah, so what do you want? I was like, you all right? <laughs> it's <was> like, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it was like, you all right? So, it's like, I, I don't understand. <laughs> so you just confused them. And they were just having a chat. And that was that was it. And then they gave me some wine. And then I just said, oh, yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring you a drink at the next event. And... They said, yeah, yeah, come for drinks. So it's like, I think it's, they're the Talbots who are at yeah. the Reapers. But yeah, they were um, they were amazing. They were so good to roleplay with. And I think, I, I think the only... I, I find most marches are incredible to roleplay with. Like, if you ever... <clears throat> if there's never anything not happening, just walk into the marcher camp and you'll just be involved in yeah. what, what happened to you or you'll just have a lovely time. Like, they're just an awesome bunch of roleplayers. Thank you for the bits, Tony. More bits. More bits for the bit god. Um, they were, yeah, they they were just great. I, I I think they had to. I think they left because one of them was wasn't feeling very well towards the end of the evening. So I think they I think that was the reason they had to leave. But they were a lot of fun. They were a lot of fun. Um, vegetable smut is great. I have a carrot one hanging up in the front room. Excellent. Uh, I only saw a glimpse of the rude vegetables, and they haunt me to this day. Haunt and titillate in equal measure. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, yeah. I bought them for someone in Wintermark who who's trying to collect all of the smut in the field and then give it to the orcs as a present. I don't know. I'm very confused by the whole matter myself. So I'm too sweet and innocent for that. Uh, they're right. making more... <laughs> Huh? So I laughed. I love it. Too loud at that point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, there was, it was. I, I don't. I don't think anyone had a bad word to say about the Reapers Ball, which was great. So, yeah. yeah. So once again, I think the, yeah. the only complaints were icy complaints of you didn't tell us the Reaper was going to turn up, and which I loved because that made the best mask that I've ever seen. Which is the uh, the map through glasses, the holes. Yeah, yeah. who's yeah the yeah, it, but it's it's never going to be Hayden's or Wolfric's um, bandage mask in the field yes, one. That's that one. Yeah, that, that was also amazing. I remember seeing that like yeah, that counts. That was just like <laughs> yeah, te he was a teenage mutant ninja turtle. That's all he was. He was great. It was wonderful. Uh, just got an idea for another rude song. Excellent. I need to hear this. See, 
I had an idea for a song that I thought would be really good to commission in the field, and it's called it, uh, it's called Those Bastard Reapers, and I just thought that's such a good title for a song. I might have to find someone just say, "There you go, do something with that." If that sort of thing happens, I can only imagine that that whoever, whatever bard comes up with that song will think will panic that the reapers coming up to them, and then find out they're giving a lot of money. It, constantly hear that song wherever they go yeah i mean <laughs> i'm definitely going to commission it it's it's just a um it's just going to be one of those things i'm definitely going to commission that that to happen it's just it just makes me laugh when i when i came up with it um right let, let's load up the zip the, the the image again let's go back to your roll of honor uh is he complaining it's not up no <laughs> um so the following titles is awarded to those uh, that fill a vital role in the company. So Scouts uh, acts as the captain's eyes as a runner. That's self-explanatory. Um, I have no group yet, so I'm not about to start slagging any of them off through the medium of song. How much would it cost, in character-wise, Jess, for you to write a song? Absolutely slag us off in a medium Really of slag off the Reapers. Absolutely. They need it. <laughs> I need to get. Um, I need to hire Mercy to write a uh, Bron disc tra- disc song as well, slagging him off. S- S- it is, yeah, Zara. I agree yeah, with we, that. Was... Yeah, we do. Like, absolutely, write a song about us. We'll, we'll create game. It'll be fun. We've got our own bards, and we'll just have to do a disc song back. <laughs> How would it feel though? It'd be, it'd be really good. Fun. The Reapers are going. Oh my god. They go, no, no. By the virtues, have you heard this bard has sung this song called The Bastard Reaper? The Bastard Reaper. Also, yeah, that is a weird term in... Um, yeah, in it really is, yeah. I can't... No. Uh, Leagueish rap battle. That'd be hilarious. Absolutely. Yeah, slacking... Yeah. What would it be? I can't think. I'll have to have a think of that one. Um... I would need to consult my sources for reasonable prices, but if it's high enough. How many events have you been to, Jess? Um But yeah, I'll 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 pay that. I I will buy I'll pay that. Because I just think it would be so funny for the Reapers to go up to the bard and say, What what made you uh what are their most mockable traits? Have have you met them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you met our friends? They're leaguish. Exactly, <laughs> Zara. There we go, that's one. But yeah, Jess, I, I will pay you thrones to do to do that. Um that's so funny. It's I forgot what's leaguish is yeah. that's a good one, yeah. But imagine going <laughs> yeah, read the looking glass. Ask Choco Moco Latte, ask Ryan as well, he'll help. Um It's uh Oh, what was I? What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, no, that was it. So it was the whole, um, yeah. So they go up to the bard and they just say, "Right, so you're singing this song about us. Who paid? Who? Who did you write that song, or did someone pay you to write that song?" And then imagine reaction. It's like Cal paid you to write that song. <laughs> yeah. like, that sounds about right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be brilliant. Oh, I'd love that. Uh, do you want that list in alphabetical order or by severity? <laughs> or by goat? Who mm. knows? Oh, alphabetical name drop order of uh, every mm. individual rumour. I might start a rumour. <laughs> start a rumour. Oh, dear. I didn't... An oxen or a goat, we know where it came from. Oh, I, I, it won't be. It won't be. <laughs> they. Uh, it'll be about rabbits or something. You better not. <laughs> <laughs> um right we'll pay you double to write a revenge one yes uh okay gathering material can be my mission for e1 come and find me we'll talk we'll talk money um so uh uh so you've got your uh, medica so it's your apothecary and physic i'm guessing yes yeah so not um just basic is it's a crying all the herbs needed. Um, so doesn't matter how big a herb garden is, if you're one apothecary, um, you're not going to be able to equip it out for like twenty plus 
mercenaries. Um, so getting the herbs needed for everyone. Uh, potions for people requesting potions. Um, it's it's a lot of herbs, so it's a full on job. It's just to equip the medical needs of the reapers. Zara's just come. There's a line has been written. <laughs> the reapers are fluffy bunnies with blood all in their paws. You could offer to pay them, but they don't win any wars. <laughs> I've got my my badge already for that one. <laughs> also, another Bolan present for the rabbit incident. Isn't that from that computer game? The um... that look. Uh... And I'm not too sure. No, sorry. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure. But no, Dolly got it for me. Um... Yes, that's the one. Uh, Inculinate. Inculinate. Yeah, he likes to remind me that um, um, the closest thing to killing my cat at the moment was a rabbit hole. Oh, God. Ugh. Harsh, but amazing. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> Harsh, but really, really amazing. Uh, they're made by uh, Goblin Workshop. Okay. Yeah, Goblin Workshop are very good. I think um, Abby and Max make are doing something similar as well. Viva la sombra, Nick. That's uh, Danny. That's one of my D and D party. That's uh, in the how's pub how's the, the pub? I'm I'm quite jealous. <laughs> um. Oh dear. Right. So what's what's next on the? So the the keeper of eyes gathers information at the direction of the prince. Okay. That's a uh, that's that's a me role. That is, I can I'd fill that role really well. I think. So, have you got are these positions that you've got people for at the moment, and then or are they are these ones you'll be looking at filling at E one? Some already exist, but they have different names for them. But uh, keeper of eyes and scout are just kind of rebranding of names we have already. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but yeah, but everyone will be re full full shuffle. Stop trying to sell yourself, Steve. That sorry, Han. Uh, I've made strawberry, raspberry, br blueberry, gooseberry. The next mead will be Viking blood, blue blood, pear. Uh, then I have a few more that I'm trying to do. Uh, then I'm trying to distill mead to fortify mead. Oh, love mead. So. I'm going to visit Zydor from Norway. I'll just walk across the border because uh, I think he's up in the north. That sounds good. I love mead. Uh, so the archivist uh, aims to grow the troops base of power. Our eyes and ears inside Conclave. Oof. They've got to have some patience for Conclave. Yeah. That's painful. Um, yeah, that, that's why I didn't do that job. That's not for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm a full-on magic man, but Conclave is not for me. No. Uh, Master of Hearts, a Kikabeo's dream, involving themselves in relationships and marriage packs. That sounds cool. Yeah, as I was saying before, it's just a whole thing of um, uh, marriage in the league. It's just be kind of like contracts between different groups. So it's just... Um, Getting that together, actually, kind of doing what was supposed to be the the RP relationship side of that, and kind of sticking to the league brief. Because mm. uh, we don't do it for love. <coughs> Relationships are for love, and kickabios are for love. Uh, it's not for uh, veteran marriage people. <laughs> no, it's, it's very weird. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but, it, but it leads to a lot of fun. Yes, I, I think. Uh... Cloudbury, not Gooseberry. It's all right. It's, it sounds great. Um, oh, yeah. Zara does. Uh, she's in the civil service and she has to sit through all of Conclave. <sighs> That's painful. That's painful right there. Um, but yeah, I, I still maintain the Kicker Bayos have. They do a great job. They have a great time. They must do. Uh, the Beast takes I've on. I've never the... met a boring one. <laughs> no, no, neither have I. 
Neither have I. Uh, the beast takes on the guise of our most ferocious battle mage. Uh, yeah, so that's a dramaturgy mask. Uh, so the the beast is supposed to be like the monster um, of a story or a play. And um, um, so whoever gets that title puts the beast mask on and they're supposed to just be our, our own little monster. Uh, usually probably packed up with a mass weakness in them. Well, there's um, yeah. anything else we can kind of pile on them to make them absolutely horrific, and then we just let them go have fun. <laughs> That's very cool. I like that a lot. Uh, then, uh, finally, the Reaper's Champion challenges threats to the company or its reputation when ordered. That's an interesting one. Oops. Excuse me, especially with what happened to me at the Reaper's Ball. That conversation. Because I noticed there's a position miss missing there as well. But, but it might have changed, actually. Because I can't remember the name of the person I need to go and ask for now. No, that's gone. I'll remember it, I'm sure, at some point. Um, but I need to put some names in a book. Right, yep. Yeah. Is that with the uh, for like the Reaper celebrations? Uh, I I assume so. Uh, the auditor. Yes, the auditor. That was it. Yeah. So yeah, so the auditor is about balancing books um, and being sure that ledgers are done uh, and everything is clear. So if anyone has um, besmirched your name or your group's name. You owe them a reckoning. If someone's done something good for you, you you owe them a favour. And it's making sure that those books are constantly balanced. Right. Like a, a show, a social dynamic. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Jesus, mine's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun though. It'll be a lot of fun. Um. So. Um, yeah. Um, so the auditor, as I just bought them, let's just put up. Uh, the audit is created by the Festival of the Reaper. It was actually created by the Harlequin, who's one of our egregores. Um, egregores. Uh, but he couldn't make it to the event where the Reaper came back. Um, so we took the auditor, who usually goes around with the Reaper, and we made that another character that goes around with the Reaper at the Masquerade of the Reaper Festival. Okay. So the auditor isn't someone in the Reapers, then? No, it's a mask. So it's, it's another persona. Ah. Like, the, like the Reaper is a version of the Doctor's mask. Mm. Oh, you're trying to teach me things. I don't like this game anymore. Slowly, a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's worth knowing, then. Because that, that means then I've got... Yeah, I've got a lot of questions to ask then at uh, E1 probably on uh, the Saturday more than likely depends if I get all my business done on the Friday but soon Steve will become a leaguer how dare you how... he's already got a mask <laughs> I have yeah I have got the best mask going that's for sure um, okay so there was something else that I wanted to talk to you about because something else uh, I thought I, I figured because I didn't realize we'd spend so long talking about the bastard Reapers um, but here we are. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Um, you're running in a you're running a lap. Yes. Importance. Yes. When is this? Uh, third to the fifth of March. I think there's still I think seven tickets left. Nice. Fifty, but it's at the um, at I Love, mm. which is just an incredible site. If anyone hasn't been to it yet. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's where they have like the uh, large variety of just amazing yeah. top quality laps. And now also mine. Um, <laughs> no, okay, so what's so portents? So what's portents about? Uh, so the portents is uh, kind of like a, mi uh, a switch round of traditional LARP. So um, you are playing the bad guys. Uh, raiding through and essentially getting the 
good guys for a chance. So you're playing uh, villains. Um, okay. sort of taking inspiration from uh, The Witcher, sort of like World Hunt, uh, Brothers Grimm, and uh, also in a more sort of a fun way, uh, kind of Disney villains as well as Monsters Inc. <laughs> a lot of similarities to Monsters Inc. Uh, which is a way is that um, you are going through and you're at- raiding a, t- uh, a town or a bunch of towns or villages and you are trying to uh, not kill everyone but try and get as much fear out of that populace as possible. So every raiding party is trying to go in, cause as much fear to the NPC uh, villagers and townsfolk uh, and then leave as quick as possible. And that fear is then... Um, in an empire version, your crystal mana to then do rituals. It's very, very, um, very potent power source. Hence the Monsters Inc. uh, Monsters Inc. reference. So, so how did you come up? How long have you had this in your mind then to come up with this sort of this sort of game? Uh, So I've come up with a few events before. I had like um, yeah, there was one time I almost had this this big deal for uh, a lot quite a few years ago um so the system itself is new because i write larps around the site and not write a larp to fit a site right okay so based on the site i then write a larp that has everything there that i try and get the most out of the potential but also give it leave room that it can be in different locations as well mm-hmm um, but the mechanics were made before. So um, I had a couple of systems where I made an algorithm that allowed people to make their own magic items or potions. Um, so in the portents, the potion algorithm is still there. Uh, so you can create any potion you like uh, with your own flavor and spin attached to it. Because uh, I didn't like at Empire the limited roleplay ability you have for potion lists. Yeah. I really like the idea of, um, right, I want to be a potion maker. Okay, cool. Uh, what do you want to do? I want to be, I don't know, um, I really like Skyrim. And I essentially also want to be a cat that sells drugs. And I want it to be my particular type of drug. And I want, I want this to be the roleplay effect. And, and it has these qualities to it. Yep, yeah, cool. No problem. You can do that. Mm. So, okay, I want to be um, a different drug dealer and I want to make my own drugs. Yeah, it'll be completely different from someone else's. Already, you've created a game. There's now two drug factions trying to push <clears> their own <throat> drugs around. Mm. And there's stuff going on. Uh, and then you've got all the different healing potions, poisons, anything you can come up with. There's a mechanic and a set amount of how much it would cost for you to make. Uh, in game for those potions out of ingredients. That's amazing. That sounds so cool. I do. I do like the. Uh, I suppose it'd be described as a sandbox, wouldn't it? Really, more than anything. So everything's very open and. Yeah, so the it, game is incredibly open. So, uh, yeah. It's kind of it's uh, limiting in what you can do. So if you're a potion maker, you do potions. Hmm. Um. But uh, and you can still fight and do everything else. But uh, when you're in your category, there's a lot that you can just explore within that within the game world. And uh, and part of the fun is um, it's an exploration sandbox. Yeah. So you know where you're from. You're the, the villains. You come from this bad uh, world. Let's we'll call it that without going into the very weird uh, details. Um, but you have this ability to enter into other worlds and raid them for fear. Uh, but you haven't been to this world before. So you don't know what you're expecting when the players go into the other side. You don't right. know if it's something worse than you, if it's something lovely, if it's just a bunch of plant people. <laughs> you have no idea what's on the other side when you can go and do these raids. That sounds really cool. That Yeah, and I'm not just saying that either. That does sound really, really cool. So circuits here... Uh, and they're crewing for you, I believe. 
So amazing. Yes, it's it's going to be. I'm I'm making it so it's really good fun to crew as well. Yeah, uh, the crew know what they're sort of what they're doing, uh, but the players have no idea what they're doing. What they're up against. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Just... I mean, it's yeah, because it's normally the other way around. The crew are the baddies, and they know what they're doing, and the players still well, the players should never really know what they're doing, but. This yeah. one, yeah, the other way around. So, yeah, playing as as a baddie. Oh, and how much is a ticket? Um, 85 is normal types of thing. It's £45 initially to uh, reserve your ticket, and then it's 40 on, on the door. Okay. There's a half and half. Yeah. Uh, and it's... Program. it's all done through ILAP. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's, is it Friday, yeah, Saturday, yeah. Sunday, is it? Yes, yeah. So, uh, starting late Friday and then finishing kind of like Sunday lunchtime. But, um, but yeah, the players are going to have the whole of the Viking village to play in. Yeah. That's going to be their little um, land to live in. And then the cowboy town is where they're going to be raiding. For people that know the Isle Up site, that's essentially, it's like, what, 30 plus buildings and a church and a pub and stuff? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it looks incredible. Uh, so, raiding that at night as you're a bunch of monsters and villains is going to be a lot of fun a lot of fun yeah yeah and then based on the, the kind of the raiding part that goes in they get to choose the horror types they want to do mm. so uh, from anything just being big scary monsters running in and doing you know normal big monster stuff to um being more psychological so you could go in and pretend to be uh yeah, you know, a, a classic Disney trope. You're, uh, an, you're an old lady just trying to sell some apples. And you just give out apples to everyone, uh, not realising that you've poisoned those apples with psychedelic drugs. Yeah, and then everyone comes in later. See, um, that, that sounds like yeah, the sort of thing that I would do. <laughs> uh, oh No, that's, that sounds like a lot of fun. And it, The third to the fifth? Yes. Okay. So it's literally... Oh, it's literally the day. Nick, what role uh, would you give Steve if he could make it? I so there's a class we have. Um, just quite. Uh, I think I think it's pretty... fuck off, Bolan. <laughs> Not trying at all to influence. <laughs> um, so there's one we could have designed uh, for people that are usually <laughs> involved with uh, running events because hmm. usually. <laughs> Because um, uh, usually, uh, you know, event organisers don't get to play with all the really fun toys yeah. that they they bought. Uh, yeah. So I know, like, you know, Northern Kingdoms have just recently got um, this amazing rock troll. And it looks incredible. But uh, with this class, we called the Cursed. Uh, you get to play as a normal person who has a curse on them. Uh, so once every event, and there's other ways of kind of redoing the special ability, you can turn into your cursed form. Essentially, you put on a monster suit that you have. Um, so if you've got a werewolf suit, you can go, yeah, I'm cool, no problem. Now's the right time. You know, the moon's high or this particular curse thing activates. I go into my monster form and then you have this ad ridiculous monster character that you get to fight alongside your monster friends to raid the village. So it gets you that other side of the trope. Uh, and because it only works with limited time, you're not then stuck in a monster suit for all three days. You get out of the fight, you're ready to calm down, or you have the, the role play fun you want out of your, um, your giant, massive, potentially hot, very hard to move around suit. Uh, and then you, you fade back into your, to your original form. So, <clears throat> one good laugh, I think, for you. <laughs> Doesn't sound fun at all. How dare you mention it? I really want to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like so much fun. That really does sound like so much fun. Yeah, we're just trying to just mix up things mm. that wasn't. <sighs> I didn't see working in other systems, or I saw working really well in other systems. Yeah. Um, Lying Lead and Northern Kingdoms are ones I got lots of inspiration from because uh, they've got some fantastic mechanics. And um, and systems for freedom. Um, so another one is I didn't like how magic item creating was made in most games. Um, 
once again, it's very linear. Um, so in this one, uh, magic item creating is done through rituals you make with diamonds, which is like our version of uh, demons. So um, you go into, you, you make your own ritual circle up, mm. put the item you want enchanted in the middle, and then you contact the demon that is, or diamond that's uh, connected to your runes, and you make a deal with them, which then, once you complete that quest, gets you that magic item to be active and creates a magic item. And then uh, the next time you do it, it's just a, a harder mission to complete. Mm. But you don't know what the characteristics are of the diamond. No. Once you get your runes, you you slowly develop and learn about the relationship you're having with that person as it goes on. Okay, that's and obviously really cool. The, you get well play effects on those magic items as well. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah, that's really good. How dare I, how dare you try to con- fucking? It sounds really good fun. And plus, playing a playing a, a, a baddie as well. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah. Well, a lot of time, I think it's quite difficult to play um, uh, to play bad guys uh, because you've got the, the, the PvP aspect. It's like Empire. It's very difficult to play a, a bad guy successfully because you could accidentally upset someone because it should be everyone versus the bad guys and orcs. And obviously you can have yeah. um, you know, confrontations and problems. That's it's good fun, but it's not mm. for everyone. No. Um, but with this one, because you're all villains and you're working together, it's still uh, PvE. Yeah. It shouldn't be much PvP like at all. It should be you're all the villains in a raiding party together. You must work hard together and and work together. Yeah. To be successful and do this and survive it. Um, which means that you're not going to have that problem. You can be mean. <laughs> Because the crew are absolutely aware that you're going to be mean to them. Mm. Uh, you know, you're, you're there to be scary. Yeah. And uh, there's certain things we've designed to kind of stop particularly negative things of, of villainy. Mm. Um, so uh, our magic and fear is all based around um, psychological. Um, so how we say is that if you want to try and get the fear out of someone... You can't get that emotional response into the magical foe for you to harness and bring back if they're being tortured or they're dead because all they're feeling at that time is pain. So you're not getting what you want. No. Um, also, if you kill someone, they don't have any emotional flow anymore that goes into like, the weave of magic. So you can't grab the fear that you wanted because you've just killed the guy. Yeah. So, you're... so everyone's trying to kind of control fear and do a lot of people management without actually killing everyone because there's not going to be much of a village left to come back to. It's be very much like Blair Witch Project. Yeah. Sort of jobby. That would be, be very cool. Just lots of throwing sticks around places and just, yeah, get the noise, get the old uh, imagination going. Not that I want to give the players any tips or anything. But... So, are you ready for this? This is from Jess, the bard. A gaudy mess in red and black attempts to force their flair, the flair they lack. It even is the rarest sight when they put their shoes on right. You'll know they're heading down your way for better or for ill, for you can see those bastard reapers coming down the hill. <laughs> That's brilliant. That is so good. I'd like to hear the tune. She's not wrong. No, she's not wrong. <laughs> not wrong at all. That's so good. That is really, really good. Oh, yeah. You, as uh, Rich said, um, that's fantastic. I can see everyone joining in on the chorus already. So yeah, James has said so. Monsters Inc. Yes, yeah, pretty much. That's see, yeah, Monsters Inc. Sort of the LARP with. Uh, like I was when I was talking to uh, Ari uh, from Spain, and uh, her group are coming up with John Wick the LARP. You know what I thought about a John Wick the LARP, and I, was, I watched that, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Like, it's such a good idea. <laughs> I didn't. I did, I'll 
it's such an awesome world yeah. to do stuff in. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, yeah, no, you've, she's probably by far the best person to do it because the, just look at the pictures and things of her other luck she's done. Just look amazing. Yeah. Phenomenal. So good. Even the wedding video that she put up or the venue she had for that. Incredible. What? Because <laughs> yeah. I, I think she's looking at a Bedouin style setup for the John Wick. I think she's there. She's looking at a location this weekend, I believe. So yeah, I think she posted up in your in your Discord. Yeah, just looking. So Dolly's just said um, me and Dolly were looking at Nerf guns today because we thought, are they? Is it going to be a Nerf LARP or or how are they going to do it? We just thought, yeah, that's what I thought. Because when I thought about it, it's like, well, you can't have a really nice venue because you want to for like the hotel of. Yeah, um, like John Wick, you want to have something that looks lavish, but you can't then do airsoft in a lavish hotel. No, you can't. No, yeah. So it would have, it would have to be Nerf. But uh, so Dolly found a essentially a Gatling gun, Nerf gun. Of course, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I found a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> I thought, oh, that would be good. Uh, Zara said, Lucifer the LARP. With hell loops and stuff, that would be good. Mm. That would be good. Oh, so I'm going to a um, a Firefly LARP in April as well. Not sure. I need to try to get a revolver for that one, but yeah, that's going to be good fun as well. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be. I'm NPCing for that one. I'm the bartender. So, yeah. I had a choice of either being the sheriff or the bartender for that one, so I went for bartender because uh, cap revolver. Yeah, I mean, I saw it on Amazon. It's like twenty quid for a metal six shooter cap gun, so I'd probably do that. Um, but yeah, that that could be a lot of fun because I didn't want to play the sheriff because I'm always a fighty person, and uh, even playing Vampire the Masquerade, I was typecast as a brewer, so. Yeah, a bartender. That would be a laugh, I think. Be a good, awesome. It'll be a giggle. So, right, I've just noticed we've been going for an hour and a half, and you've got a D and D game to play in. Or are you running? No, you're just running it. Aren't you? to, to give me abuse. <laughs> but, excellent. I, I, as I say, I I didn't notice you looking at your phone at all. Uh, you don't no, know because I kept messaging. Go wrap it up. Yeah. Stop talking. Let, let us in. Well, everyone in the pub who's watching, it's not up to him. <laughs> um that's exactly what i said it's like, i'm having fun it's uh yeah they're not you they're not using loud guns we're coming <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do is i'm gonna have a quick let's have a let's have a quick look uh tabletop rpgs let's let's find someone um oh no wrong part wrong thing i didn't i didn't mean to click on that uh Tabletop RPGs, low to high. Uh, I don't know who they are. Okay, so I'm hoping that they're English so that we can. Yeah, they'll understand. So, so Big Lundy, I guess. Let's Let's put that in. And then let's go and raid them and be, let's be, what? what have I missed? I did go looking and ended up the only viewer of a pair of goth country singers, but they stopped singing. That would be awesome. Um, I'm going to preach. That would be clean. amusing. Surprise. Uh, I, I can <laughs> see you more as a gangrel. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I love the Giovanni for vampire. So, um, Right, let's. There we go. Go and give this person a lot of love. Uh, it doesn't say whether they're English or not, so they might not understand what we're putting in. I don't know. Um, but regardless, go give them some love. They've, there's two people watching. Go say hi, and let's make their evening. Okay. Uh, I forgot that I actually have to click on it and wait 10 seconds. I'm still not very good at this. I don't know what streaming is. What's Twitch? Um, anyway, I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going on my honeymoon.
Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>